I am so excited today Martinez finally agreed to let me shoot a video on Unagi. Today we're going to take you to one of my favorite eel places called Marushizu and we're going to show you what eel is all about. Come on, let's do this! Now, working with eel is not easy. First of all, it has tons of tiny, tiny, tiny little bones, and it's very, very delicate. The way that they grill this is kabayaki style. What it means is they actually butterfly it, they remove all the bones from it, then they skewer it. Skewering here is the key. And then they grill it without any sauce, and then they steam it, and then they bring it back again, and then they add the sauce on top of that, which kind of like caramelizes the sauce on top of it with the grill. And if you want to nerd out with me, <laughs> yaki means grilling, but kaba, they think, means those cat tails from the ponds, like you know there's a pond and there's a cattail, and it looks like a skewered eel. So you're grilling it like that, get it? <laughs> Here's some word knowledge for you, right at your face. So soft and fluffy, and the edges are perfectly crispy. It has a little bit of a crunch, but it's not overcooked in any way. And the sauce on top of it's like soy sauce and mirin and sugar, and it just like crisps up so nicely. And then the sauce goes on the rice and then seeps down into it, but like not all the way down to make it soggy. Oh man, it's so good. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There's the soft tenderness on the inside with a nice little sticky char of sauce on top. It's a very meaty tasting fish. It doesn't have a fishy taste to it. If you think about chicken, that's the closest equivalent that I could come up with. And I know a lot of people don't want to try eel, like even the thought of it. Some people are like, ew, it looks like a snake. It's not. It's delicious. It's a super treat here in Japan. You have to try this out. I feel like the best way to describe eel in my heart is it's like a chicken and a fish got together. When someone says chicken of the sea, I don't think tuna, I think eel. It's kind of like when you take a marshmallow and you dip a marshmallow in chocolate and it's like fluffy, but there's chocolate on the outside, but the inside you still taste the marshmallow. It's like a marshmallow fish. So I've sprinkled on a sancho. It makes the edges of your tongue a little bit numb. It's perfect for eel like this. You know what makes me very happy? Martina didn't really want to shoot this video. She's not passionate about eel, because she hasn't had really good eel like this. This place here and now she has seen the light because this is good stuff just look at how beautiful this is this is a sexy looking piece of fish you can't help but just look at it and like ah oh. Oh. So summertime is actually the season for eel. Mostly around like July to August. We're having it right at the end of June. But if you come to Japan, make sure that you try this in the summertime. It's wonderful. Not a lot of people talk about how great eel is. But it's great. I mean, I love eel. Mm. Speaking of word knowledge that Martina had, um, in Kafka on the Shore, I'm not sure how many of you read it, that one old character that's kind of like crazy, his favorite treat is eel, and I feel the same way. It means you're a crazy character on the shore? No, it means that <clears throat> I talk to cats, um, and then I got to flip a stone. Um, I'm not going to spoil the rest of the book for you, but I talk to cats. Mm. 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 So the style of eel breeding now is kind of the most common one where you have rice with sauce and the eel on top of it. But when we were in Nagoya, we had it served totally differently. They actually do a completely different process. They serve it four different ways. Have it as a soup. They have it with like wasabi. They have it on rice. So just because you've had eel once in Japan does not mean you've had eel all the different types of ways. And I can say that that Nagoya eel was the first time I ever said, wow, eel is great. Eel is great. And then Diamond said, well, I'm going to take you to my favorite spot in Tokyo because he came here without me with his friend. 
So even though eel season is in the summertime, that doesn't mean that it necessarily comes cheap. There's a lot of overfishing. And from what I heard, I'm not gonna name any names, but some other countries that are in Japan have been infringing on Japan's waters and taking some of their eel. I don't know, I heard that in a food rumor mill. Could be wrong, not sure. Two pieces here cost 3,600 yen. My three piece set costs 4,300 yen. So it is a lot of money to spend on lunch. It was supposedly a lot cheaper a long time ago, but it's really, really, really like ridiculous. Ridiculously delicious. Really, really good looking. <laughs> So that's it for this week's food adventure program for awesome people. I hope we've convinced you to try eel. It looks scary. You might think it's a snake. It's not a snake. Make sure you come on out and try it when you get the chance. And we're gonna let you guys know how to find this place in our blog post, but it is a bit complicated. Or should we keep it secret, Ducky? Hmm. Now nah, we'll share it with you guys. It's near Tsukiji Market, or Tsukiji, as everyone wants me to say. Tsukiji. There's no Tsukiji.